Mr. President. Senator from Pennsylvania. Mr. President, I rise to address the uh, Shaheen Amendment number 925 that uh, uh, the, the chairman of the committee just uh, referred to. Senator may proceed. Uh, thank, thank you very much, Mr. President. I, I just want to urge my colleagues to support this amendment. I want to start by thanking Senator Shaheen for her leadership on this, Senator Kirk for his leadership, Senator Durbin for his support and leadership on this. We've all worked together on this. Uh, and I want to just briefly explain why I think this is important and why this uh, amendment deserves the support of, uh, of this body. First of all, people ought to understand we have an extensive and complicated system by which taxpayers and consumers are forced to prop up to an artificially high price the price of sugar in this country. We subsidize a handful of wealthy sugar growers at the expense of everybody in America because I can't think of any consumer who doesn't consume sugar. Everybody uses some amount of sugar. It's in virtually all processed food. It's in all, obviously, all, any kind of confectionery or any kind of sweets. But it's, it's a, a staple, a fundamental staple. And in fact, the poorest Americans spend the highest percentage of their limited income on sugar because that is the nature of this food staple that we have. Well, what do we do through our agricultural policy? One of the things we do is we put a limit on how much we can bring in from overseas. It just so happens that there are some places in the world that can grow sugar cheaper than we can. And rather than take advantage of the opportunity to have a lower cost staple for, a, for all Americans, including the poorest of Americans, instead, we establish a quota. And we say there's only so much that we're going to bring in without imposing a big, huge, expensive tariff on it. And since we don't grow enough ourselves to meet the demands, when we hit that quota, we do, in fact, impose that huge tariff on the additional sugar that we need to buy. But that's not all we do uh, to subsidize these handful of growers at the expense of American taxpayers and consumers. Another program that we have is an extensive loan program where ultimately the taxpayer lends money to sugar producers, and it's a heads I win, tails you lose program for the sugar producer. If the price drops too low on sugar, that the uh, producer would actually have to reach into his own pocket to pay back the loan, guess what? He doesn't have to do that. He can say, never mind, I'm not gonna pay back the loan. I'll just give you the sugar. Um, that guy, this is classic, uh, you know, heads, heads they win, tails we all lose. Um, and it goes beyond that. Because in an effort to prop up the price at artificially high levels so that we're all paying more than we need to for sugar, we have a program that's called the Feedstock Flexibility Program. And this program is one in which the USDA takes taxpayer money and buys up huge quantities of sugar in order to try to drive up the price for all of us. I, I know you th it's hard to believe that this is true. I'm not making this up. I'm not creative enough to make this up. This is real. Now then, what does the USDA do with the massive quantity of sugar that it might buy? By the way, front page story in the Wall Street Journal just a few weeks ago about a huge purchase the USDA is seriously thinking about making, has the discretion to do it, might very well make. Well, what they do if they buy all this sugar, they don't have anything to do with it. So they sell it at a huge loss. They, they sell it to, to somebody who's gonna make ethane or something with it. That, that's what we do, it's unbelievable all the ways in which taxpayers and consumers are forced to subsidize a handful of very wealthy sugar growers. So that's what we do uh, as policy under existing law. And what this amendment does is it tries to push that back a little bit. That's all we're trying to do here. Well, what, what Senator Shaheen and I and Senator Kirk and Senator Durbin uh, have done in this amendment is we say, can we at least push back some of the most egregious features here? Could we go back, for instance, to the policy we had prior to the 2008 Farm Bill? Because prior to 2008, oh, we, we did subsidize sugar, but at least not quite as much as we do today. And so that's what we're trying to do. Let's just go back to the policies we had before 2008. And specifically, let's eliminate this feedstock program, this program whereby the, US, the USDA can go out and purchase huge quantities of sugar, driving up the price, and then turn around and sell it at a huge loss. Let's, let's end that, and let's have a little bit more flexibility on this quota so that American consumers can uh, have the opportunity to buy sh more sugar at prices that are at least a little closer 
to the world prices. Here's a few facts we ought to keep in mind. The net effect of all these programs on uh, all of our consumers, and as I say, everybody consumes sugar, is that we pay on average about 30% more than the world market price for sugar. That's what we're doing to our consumers now. And by the way, that's separate and apart from the cost to taxpayers. That's just what consumers are forced to pay. Now, does that have the effect of maybe uh, protecting a handful of jobs among sugar growers? It probably does. And so the Commerce Department decided to take a look at this, and they did a study on this. And they discovered, sure enough, there are a certain number of jobs among sugar producers that are protected by the fact that we don't allow a free market in sugar, and we don't allow imports uh, from uh, more efficient producers. But here's what else they discovered. They discovered for every job that we save among sugar producers, we lose three jobs among companies that manufacture with sugar, the companies that make cakes and desserts and candies and all the other kinds of things that we manufacture that require sugar as an input. And the reason we lose those jobs is because those companies can't compete with foreign imports that don't have this crazy sugar program. So, for instance, we have candy companies that have left America and they've moved to Canada because Canada doesn't do this. And so when they locate in Canada, they can buy sugar at a normal world price, the same as anyone else anywhere in the world outside of America. Maybe not anybody, but lots of people outside of America can buy sugar. That's much, much cheaper than what they have to pay to buy sugar when they're an American citizen, American company. And so they can make candy much cheaper. So we lose American jobs, which we have lost. They go to Canada or somewhere else. And how can that possibly be a good outcome? To lose three jobs for everyone you protect. It doesn't make any sense. This is a badly flawed policy. I, I would advocate that we completely repeal all this. That would be my personal view. That is not what this legislation, that is not what this amendment does. All we do in this amendment is we say, let's just go back to where we were before the Farm Bill of 2008, expanded this program, and created this new liability for taxpayers. So, Mr. President, uh, I urge my colleagues to support the Shaheen Amendment number 925 for some good common sense uh, improvements to our existing sugar policy.